It's been a little over six months since Croatia opened an embassy in Seoul and appointed its first resident ambassador to South Korea since the two countries established formal diplomatic relations in 1992. Damir Kushen, the Croatian ambassador to South Korea, was gracious enough to sit down with us and talk about how the embassy came about and what the future holds for Seoul and Zagreb. Welcome to the show, Ambassador. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for the invitation and interest for Croatia. No, certainly. Can you start us off by telling us about how diplomatic relations between South Korea first began? Uh, diplomatic relations between Korea and Croatia were established in, as you said, in 1992. Uh, at that time, Croatia emerged as a new independent country after the dissolution of the former Yugoslavia. Um, at that time, Croatia, as practically many countries in Eastern Central Europe, uh, was looking for the freedom and democracy. Mm. And then during this time, how has that relationship evolved? But since 1992, based on the principle that both countries uh, share the values of liberal democracy, have established really friendly and cooperative relationship. Um, in practice, it means that we have signed a number of bilateral agreements covering practically almost all areas. This is a kind of the legal platform that practically allow both countries to do far more, either in the field of economy, business, culture of arts or science, innovation, technology, cooperation, or in the multilateral agenda. And then this uh, decision to establish a Croatian embassy in Seoul, uh, that opened up in October 2018. How does that fit into this evolving relationship? South Korea opened the embassy in Zagreb in 2005. It means far earlier, Kotras, the trade representative body, was in Zagreb since then as well. Uh, the only reason why Croatia uh, didn't open earlier the embassy in Seoul, it's simply based on, on the reason of, of the budget restrictions. Mm. Uh, emerging from the crisis some three decades ago, Croatia starts to develop and extend the diplomatic network step after step. And this is practically the only reason of, let's say, our delay. But now with a with a full size embassy in Seoul, I think that we will compensate somehow and with quite ambitious agenda, I think that we will do far more in the coming years. Mm. How has it been setting up that office here in Seoul? Have you had any difficulties or obstacles along the way? But frankly speaking, uh, in the first uh, few weeks at least, or month, uh, I, I have to say that I was sometimes more engineer than diplomat. <laughs> uh, but this is the way how it is. I mean, it's uh, it's benefit and it's privilege to work and be in Seoul. It's a country that is perfectly organized. Uh, the people are approachable. I can't say that I had any negative, any kind of imp- experience. Uh, what I had as a kind of, the, let's say, professional burden uh, was that to organize three ministerial visits in succession in the first four months. Mm. Uh, this is what, uh, on one hand, uh, is the marvelous part of my job, and I'm very happy that uh, since the very early start, we practically managed to bring three ministers in, in Korea. But on the other hand, it was demanding. It was demanding without uh, support staff, uh, practically looking for the office, uh, um, looking for the logistics and everything that a normal business office or embassy should have. On the other hand, uh, I have to say that my lack of knowledge of Korean language, uh, somehow I try to compensate with even more ambitious agenda to work and build a network with a lot of friends and colleagues in Korea. And I'm very happy that after six months, not that I feel like at home, but I have really wide network of the colleagues and friends who helped me in any every, in every single step I used to make in the last six months. How did you end up becoming the uh, ambassador to Korea? I mean, what did you know about Korea before you came? And uh, as you said, you don't know the Korean language. I mean, how has it been adapting to life here? I mean, I've been foreign service for 27 years, traveling from one country to another. I have been a, a Croatian diplomat uh, in Europe, uh, in America, in Australia, uh, now in Asia. Um, I think that as uh, someone whose job is the foreign service, uh, we don't have a luxury for adaptation period. We have to start to work since the day one. Uh, I think that uh, um, the fact that I'm uh, also... Uh, educated in international relations, uh, this is my field of love and somehow I'm very happy for every single diplomat. I think it's good to be in Korea, uh, whoever likes the international relations, to understand the complexity of international relations. Additional thing is that uh, I have really done a lot in the fields of science, innovation and technology mm-hmm. as the, let's say, science diplomacy during my few last posts and uh, perfect place to exercise that kind of the job is in your country. 
country. I mean, you managed to do marvelously to combine those who produce the knowledge and those who utilize the knowledge, making the highly technology uh, prosperous country in a practically few years. Mm. Is the embassy now fully up and running or, or there's still... Uh, yeah, embassy still... is fully running actually, frankly speaking, we had to run from the very first day mm. uh, because three weeks after my arrival I had the first ministerial visit, the foreign minister took out the ribbon and formally opened the embassy. Uh, now we have a, let's call it nucleus embassy, it means we're two colleagues uh, uh, who are local staff and my colleague from Zagreb and myself, but for the small country this is the way to go. But uh, as I said, I mean, there are plenty of doors that I would like to knock on and, and encourage cooperation in all fields. And uh, always would be nice to have more local people, primarily local people with me. What does having an embassy allow you to do that you couldn't do before? Uh, as uh, relations between uh, Croatia and South Korea? The fact that we are based here, it means that every day I should practically may have a number of meetings, uh, starting from business and trade, that is priority of every single diplomat wherever he serves. I think that we could do far more than on the remote control, coming to Korea for a few days per year. Uh, coming to university cooperation that I'm very keen to establish. I think that, of course, visiting universities, discussion around with, with uh, making the lecture at the university that would like to learn more about Croatia. It's an um, enormous set of opportunities that we can do far more. Coming to the visits from Croatia, as I said, I mean, previously we had hardly any visits, but in the last in few uh, four, five, six months, we had three ministerial visits, former presidents, two academic delegations, and now we are waiting for May with a set of new visits here. Mm. And what do you hope to do with this embassy now? What's, what kind of areas of cooperation are you keen to develop and grow? Well, one area that by all means is the business and trade. Uh, I would like to promote more and more uh, Croatia's uh, U European member state, European Union member state. Uh, it means that this is the closest uh, gateway to Europe. Uh, I would like to welcome more uh, Korean business coming and recognize the potential of the fact that uh, any Korean vessel bringing the goods to single European market uh, could practically approach to the Croatian ports. Uh, this is uh, due to geographical position of Croatia and due to the fact of the European Union member state. Uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, the fact that Croatia will chair the European Council uh, first half next year, it means, be, let's say, the president of the European Union opened an enormous set of opportunities uh, that Korea would be also more visible uh, in the European context. Coming to academic field, I'm very happy to say that I already paid a visit to the number of institutes, uh, high technology places in Korea, and I could foresee cooperation in that field more and more. Uh, the fact that Croatia is a member of European Union means we have availability uh, of Horizon 2020 financial framework that can really enormously encourage cooperation and finance cooperation between Croatian and Korean scientists. Mm. You say Croatia is a gateway to Europe. For a lot of South Korean people, though, I think we're perhaps most familiar with Croatia as a travel destination. In a previous interview, you talked about how the tourism industry uh, in Korea is, is, uh, is attracting so much attention uh, from South Korean tourists. Uh, what do you feel is the appeal for South Koreans f to Croatia? I mean, I can, I can say that I'm extremely glad that uh, half a million Korean people recognized Croatia as the attractive tourist destination and paid a visit last year. This trend that practically came to a really large, large number um, is something that uh, the people visiting Croatia also initiate a number of ideas, projects. They call the embassy after they come back with some proposal either to go to study to Croatia or to establish mm, some wow. business. This, mm. this is a, a, the wonderful set of setups and follow-ups uh, after their visits. Uh, promotion of tourism is always a tricky thing and uh, I think that we should work very hard to keep up the destination of Croatia as attractive one. Frankly speaking, there are a lot of beautiful destinations worldwide, but what uh, Korean tourists uh, prefer in Croatia is uh, quite specific. It's, it's a rich cultural heritage. Uh, international historical heritage since old Roman period onwards. And they like to enjoy in the national parks, in the landscapes, in the UNESCO protected national uh, places in Croatia, but uh, also in the crystal blue Adriatic. I mean, crystal blue Adriatic sea with a thousand of islands. Uh, Adriatic coastline of Croatia uh, is 1,700 kilometers. Mm. It's quite long, particularly mm. for, for the 
sites in Europe. Mm. Uh, it means that uh, all along that line, there are beautiful medieval cities, cultural heritage, as I said, from old Roman period to the Renaissance period, uh, the city of Dubrovnik that somehow uh, conceptually goes uh, really far beyond Croatia. It was international city, Dubrovnik Republic long ago, and quite attractive place to, to come. It's protected by UNESCO, the whole city is protected by UNESCO. But what I think the tourism is, uh, tourism is industry. Industry means to rise up the level of services and utilities. Uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, we have the direct flight uh, opened last September mm -hmm. uh, from Incheon to Zagreb. Uh, this is something that by all means is the best possible way to keep up with, uh, with, uh, with the project. More and more travel agencies are recognized in um, different parts of Croatia, not just the line that more or less is attached to Dubrovnik and Zagreb. Just before we started as well, we talked briefly about the film industry in Korea, how that yeah. has a lot of history with uh, Croatia. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. I mean, uh, Croatia, since 1960s, as at that time part of Yugoslav Federation, was always a very attractive filming destination. Uh, mm -hmm. Due to the landscapes and due to the historical heritage with so many cities that could be transferred for a very attractive background for the film industry, but also because we have all support and logistic related with the filmmaking industry. This is something that in many countries hardly have uh, incentives, the government approach to help the film industry. I'm very happy that, that uh, uh, with a few uh, productions that we are all familiar with and filmed in, in uh, Croatia, primarily in the city of Dubrovnik, like Game of Thrones, like <laughs> Star Wars, like Robin Hood, mm -hmm. like Mamma Mia 2, uh, that's also the film industry in Korea recognize that potential. And uh, in the last uh, six, seven years, we had a couple of productions done by the Korean industry, film industry in Croatia. Uh, and I think this was something that by all means was important trigger to bring to the attention of the Korean people that Croatia is quite attractive tourist destination. I hope that this interest for filming industry in Croatia would go on and that we can encourage even more productions of K Korean film industry in Croatia. Mm, there's also been several travel documentary kind of shows that have yeah. been to Croatia and that really highlighted some of the beautiful aspects uh, of the country as yeah. well as uh, the filming locations for Game of Thrones. I think that yeah. was a, 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 part, a part of that unique appeal as well right. for some Korean tourists. So where do we see the future of Croatian uh, South Korea relationship going? You know, what do you hope for it diplomatically, you know, economically yeah. and culturally? I mean, uh, coming from the bilateral aspects, uh, what we can do together, I think that we can continue to build a lot of bridges of cooperation in, in a lot of fields, uh, in business and economy. Uh, I think that for, for Korean uh, uh, companies, it's quite attractive to establish the business in the country that is practically part of the 500 million people single market with meat purchase capacity. This is not just Croatia or 4.2 million people. It's a single market. This is the main benefit of European Union and particularly of the small countries as the members in the European Union. Freedom of mobility of the people, capital ideas offer that whoever from Korea is in Croatia practically is in the European Union. Mm. This is the major factor that I think profiled Croatia on, on a different footing that we were before. Uh, coming to the academic field, I mean, I'm very happy to say that we already have seven agreements between universities, uh, Korean and Croatian. Uh, I think that uh, this is my one of my priorities to encourage it even more. We would like to have more and more students, Korean students in Croatia. In Europe, there is a very sophisticated network of cooperation between European universities. Now, any student coming from Korea could easily spend six months or one year or, or, or more uh, in, in Zagreb or one of the Croatian universities, but then be transferred or go to somewhere else in Europe. This is, I think, kind of experience that's always welcome when they return back home. Uh, science uh, and technology, uh, frankly speaking, I think uh, this is the platform for prosperity for every single nation in a way how they recognize the importance of STEM, importance of science, innovation, technology, and of course education. This is something that in your country you have marvelous. 
I think, the model for many of us. Uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, tourism is, uh, as I said, a beautiful story, but also a very demanding industry. Mm. Uh, with tourism, we need more and more uh, tourist guides speaking Korean language. <laughs> and this is another reason why we would like to encourage Korean students to go to study yeah. to Croatia. Because as a part-time job, they can easily work as the tourist guides. In mm. that sense, they can almost finance their own study. I mean, this is a people-to-people -people set of contexts that I think we should do. Uh, there's no any secret that I would love to see St. John Institute or Cultural uh, Korean Center uh, based in Croatia. I think uh, the fact that Croatia was last year visited by 18 million foreign people, 18 million foreign tourists, it means that any kind of the nice looking uh, Korean culture traditional house, temple-like, might be a landmark of the city, but also marvelous trigger for many, many people worldwide who are in Croatia. Well, this is a beautiful house, let's visit Korea. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can do a lot in that field. Uh, coming to the music, I mean, uh, uh, I have to say that I, I'm really impressed how young generation in Korea <laughs> have contributed right. significantly at the world scale for the image of the country. In many countries, they complain, well, for the image of the country, it's all done by old generation, by history, by heritage. But in your particular case, I mean, a young generation practically promoted Korean language at a global scale. Uh, th this is remarkable achievement. And uh, there is no, like, as I said, any secret that I would be very privileged if we can have uh, either BTS or any K-pop gr group uh, in, in Croatia. Uh, my offer to, and my suggestion to the managers of those groups that we have a Roman amphitheater built in the first century in Croatia. This is music hall, summer music hall. I can't say what might be better for that kind of performance. That would be quite amazing. That would be quite a sight to see K-pop in Croatia. Well, I hope South Korea, Croatia, Korea, uh, I hope South Korea, Croatia relations continue to thrive, and I hope one day I can visit Croatia myself as well as and experience all the riches you've talked about today. Ambassador Kushen, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much indeed, and come up, Sibnidab. Thank <laughs> you.